we are live. It is Empire State of Baseball for episode number 77 on this Monday, March 25th, 2024, airing on Twitch, X, and YouTube, and as always, powered by StreamYard. Welcome to the show, and for the final time, this is the end of our preseason series, as we are just three days, three days away from traditional opening day. I know there's some regular season games already played this season, but we ain't going to talk about that. We're going to talk about traditional opening day coming up. Corey Favs, how hyped are you? Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to it. Now, the only problem from my side, and I know we'll have a debate at this at some point. We have a debate about this every year. Thursday looks like a complete wash. So it looks like the Mets will be end up getting pushed to Friday uh, if the rain doesn't hold. But uh, fingers crossed they do get the game in on Thursday. If not, again, Friday's fine. That's why they end up scheduling that day off anyway right after opening day, but it, it just is very annoying where it seems like year after year that weather watch is not fun leading up to opening day. Yeah, we got a, a lot to talk about today, a lot to cover, not only with the Mets and the Yankees, but we now have a national major news story with Shohei Otani that we're going to touch on very soon. But listen, I'm excited. Whether we play baseball Thursday or Friday or Saturday, whatever it is, I'm excited for baseball it's here and um you know i'm excited to go it, it it's the stu- it's the unofficial start of spring and and summer that's what opening day is it's the start of the new outdoor season for me thomas how how you feeling today sir uh well currently I've, i'm i'm 3 picks away and for uh, my first round pick in my fantasy draft as a tradition uh for those of you who have uh been with us for a couple of years i i always happen to have a draft during the show uh keeper league so i got got a few guys ahead of me what do you guys think i got uh so top on the board Ellie de la cruz royce lewis matt mcclain cj abrams yelich uh i don't believe in relievers christian walker what do you guys think all right uh well, I actually like Chris Walker. Have... I like that. Uh, pop I like movie, Royce though. Lewis. I think Lewis is if he still is actually. Stays, yeah, I really can't take Lewis because I have two third basemen already. So not oh, gonna. Oh, there's there's, there's the <laughs> both top ta- ten countdown players right there, and we have a top twenty later on today. But we have a bunch of folks in the chat. Corey Favs, uh, what's the details on our live stream today? Yeah, right now we're currently live on multiple platforms. Uh, For those of you listening on YouTube, thank you again. That is our favorite channel to broadcast on. But we're also airing on X. We're airing from our OG station, which was Twitch. So please like, share, and subscribe, uh, regardless of where you are in our live stream community. Our YouTube especially, we are now at 220-plus subscribers. Thank you again, everyone who's been subscribing, because... Uh, That YouTube channel, all of our channels, X, Instagram, YouTube, really have seen great growth over the last uh, couple of months. So thank you again, everyone, for supporting us on our uh, start of the third season. Uh, we got one more week to go until we officially kick off season three. But uh, this is 2024. We started this thing back in 2022. Uh, Really love to see the growth over the last year. So thank you again. Now, before Thomas touches on Roback, I did want to highlight our chat here. And Real LD50 beat the crowd here as our first chatter. He's here. Thank you, Real LD. Shout out to you. Oh, we got Hitman727X in the building. Hey, make sure to give Hitman and my friends Forever Ghost and Sierra a follow over at Yankees Vibes. They just launched a new X account at Yankees Vibes to go along with their successful uh, X space. That runs from 7 to 8, Monday through Friday. So give them all some love here uh, on X and uh, whatever they're affiliated with, which we're going to get into later. Uh, We also have Swift in the building. What's going on, guys? Uh, We have 4Train Express. What's up, Richie? How are you, bro? Uh, 4Train Express, great content that they got over there. Make sure to give them a subscribe over on YouTube. Erica Garcia, you're... We have Jonathan in the building. How's it going, Jonathan? Uh, Birthday boy, actually. Uh, We usually celebrate his birthday. He's happy belated uh, to Jonathan. We got Mike Parziali, always starting it with the the hashtag (laughs) free glory. 
This has been running for it. like two years with Mike. Corey's Hall. got plenty of time on this. Oh, he's doing all right. <laughs> Corey's doing all right. But all right, yeah, Sierra, another part of the Yankees vibes crew. Is this happy hour, Rich? No, 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 no. no. We got we got water here. We're staying hydrated. It's happy hour, Joe, though. It's happy hour, Tom. Everybody else has got a drink. I'm the only one out. I, what the I, hell? This is uh, it, it is it is happy hour water for, for Tommy. By the way, CJ Abrams was the pick. Ellie got Drafted, I want Abrams, want speed, stolen bases. Okay. Categories league mm-hmm. could be a could be a play here. Another pick coming up in about 10, yeah, uh, 10 picks, so, Chris, so I'll keep you guys up there. T- my guy, you should have took Chris Nevis. What's up, boys? Chris Nevis over at Yankees Pod. Make sure to give Yankees Pod a follow. <laughs> Jimmy Rendaz and the boys holding it down over there. Jack Esposito, let's go. Jack Esposito, Staten Island native. Shout out to Jack, uh, Big Jack over there. And Bojo, howdy to Bojo, a.k.a. Brad, a.k.a. Bojo. Well, we got a lot of people in the building, so thank you so much for joining uh, tonight's uh, big <laughs> episode of Empire State of Baseball. And I'm going to run down the lineup before I do that. Thomas, uh, tell the folks all about Roback. Yes, sir. So uh, last week, I got, got some feedback on the uh, on the Azalea Q-Zip I was wearing. A little loud uh, for some people. So, so today I went with more of I don't of, even know uh, what the hell they were. Still, yeah, he didn't even. I don't think Rich still even knows what azalea is. Um, <laughs> it's not Iggy Azalea, it's uh, it's a flower, Rich. So. <laughs> anyway, so so today, uh, it's still where they the, the Masters collection is still coming out with Roback here. And I went with a more it's kind of subtle design the green, the white, very, very traditional for uh, for the Masters. Uh, again, they are, they're putting out a lot of new stuff. I think they're actually just releasing some new, they released some new shorts last week, some new women's stuff is also. Uh, coming out and uh, yeah, fun patterns. But then if you're not into all the patterns, they have some more, you know, the checkerboards, solid stripes, that kind of stuff. If that's what you're looking for, head over to roadback.com and use promo code TWASPL15 to get 15% off your first order. As long as you haven't used that email address before, uh, again, at roadback.com, polos, Q zips, hoodies, joggers, shorts, a lot of cool women's stuff as well. Um, and they, the master stuff always sells out quick. So if you are a golf fan, um, you know, a lot of those, a lot of those prints and stuff are going to speak to you, uh, check them out, uh, and, and order soon because they will sell out and they won't restock until next year. Um, this time next year. So get it while you can roadback.com promo code T 15. Beautifully done. And of course I'm wearing the Q zip right here. Oh, rollback action, uh, really comfortable stuff. So definitely head on over to rollback. T Waspel 15 is the promo code. Our lineup card presented by Rollback. First, we're starting things off at the Empire Express with a little bit of a remix. We normally talk just Mets and Yankees news and notes, but there is a big story happening on baseball. So we'd be remiss to not talk about the situation around Shoyotani and Ipe, and Ipe uh, Mizuhara. So we're going to touch on that in a little bit. Then uh, we also have to uh, touch on the J.D. Martinez signing and some Jordan Montgomery rumors. But we also have in our second portion of the show, the ESB 2024 playing rankings. If you've been following us on YouTube, we've been releasing our top 10 countdowns uh, for the last couple of weeks. We actually have a couple more episodes that are going to release this week. But we're going to bring the top 20 outfielder countdown live to the show. So we're going to do our top 20 outfielders today. A lot of great candidates to choose from. Former All Stars, multiple time All Stars, some MVPs in the mix. So it's going to be a lot of fun breaking that down tonight. And I have a season three preview for you guys what to expect for our new season of Empire State of Baseball, which kicks off next Monday, April the 1st. No April Fool's Day joke. But let's kick things off with the Empire Express. All aboard. Now, big news story, as Joe mm-hmm. alluded to before. So, Joseph, you know what, man? I'm going to let you take the floor on this one because I know you have a lot to say sure. on this current situation around yeah. this guy, Mr. Shohei Otani. Uh, everybody knows the story by now, but Joe, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so uh, it came out the other day for those who aren't briefed on it. Uh, actually, at the end of the Korea Series game, about one hour after the game, uh, MLB announced that Ipe Mizuhara – who Good is job. Sh- Shohei Otani. Of all of the names that you can't <laughs> pronounce, you pull out Ipe Muzo. I can't even say it. Mizahara. First of all, my aunt is Japanese, 100% truth. So I got to respect oh, wow. to my aunt, have a, a, a proper pronunciation. But had no respect on Yoshida's first name. <laughs> that's that's very true. Good Oshinaka on YouTube. or whatever so, you said. Anyway. About an hour after the second uh, uh, game of the the opening baseball series between the Dodgers and Padres, it comes out that 
Mizahara is under investigation by the federal government for a gambling debt incurred through illegal bookies and illegal gambling. Um, in this became a process of a, a series of questions. How much, uh, including four and a half million dollars wired from Shohei Otani's account to Mizahara to cover these debts. The question then became, well, did Otani know about it? In a very strange series of events, Mizahara came out and said, yes, he was just helping me out, all this stuff. Later on, had to walk it back, followed by statements from the Dodgers and Otani himself now today that Mizahara, in fact, lied about that and that Otani didn't know and now are accusing Mizahara of stealing four and a half million dollars from Otani to cover his gambling debt. This is a crazy, wild situation, um, not limited to the fact that gambling in any way, shape, or form with illegal bookies, regardless of whether it's on baseball or not, is a violation of the league's gambling policy. So now the question becomes, as this goes to investigation on both the federal side and the MLB side, did Mizuhara actually act on his own, or did Otani actually know about these things? If Otani did know about these things, he is then complicit and in conspiracy to, to actively fund illegal gambling, bookies, and organized crime. He, is, he would be an accessory to that. And as a result, in violation of Rule 3 of the gambling policy, which we will get, I'll get you the specific paragraph in a minute. If he does not know, then the question is, how much access did this guy have to what Otani did? They spend every day together, 24-7 apparently. They were, he's one of his best friends. And you are now accusing a guy who, instead of just incurring a gambling debt, would probably be up to a maximum of two years in prison. You are now accusing him of wire fraud and money laundering, which is more like 25 years in prison. So this is a wild story with the sport's biggest star, and we are now headed into a mess for the next few months. I'd like to know your guys' thoughts on it, um, but I, I hope I could sum it up the best way I, I know how uh, and see what you guys think. So I think uh, there it, it seems like there's three possible situations that, that could have happened here, right? So one of them is that I think is the most unlikely is that Otani was the one actually doing the betting through eBay. Um, this was all on him and this is a massive cover up, and this guy's going to take the fall. That, you know, is possible. I don't think that that's what happened. Um, the next one is essentially the, what I think is the story that they put out there today is that Otani had no idea what was going on and this money was stolen from him. Um, and again, just how as Joe laid it out. And then the third, which I think, frankly, makes the most sense, is Ipe was the one doing the gambling. Um, they are very close friends. Otani found out at some point, if you're with someone 24-7, uh, 365 basically, I I find it hard to believe you'd have no idea your friend is, is racking up this kind of gambling debt. And Otani... Uh, you know, being essentially a good friend was like, I'm going to just get you out of this. Like, we're going to pay this off and let's get you some help, hopefully. And, uh, you know, Otani then realized, oh, that was illegal. I can't do that. And then now we're in this mess and now you have to kind of cover it up. It's going to be interesting. He was very steadfast today in his press conference that he absolutely was was duped. He was stolen from. Um, and. Truth's going to come out. I think that's the other part of it. We, we only know a little bit of the story. And the, what we know from the story at this point is from Ipe, who apparently it seems like a massive liar for a lot of other reasons. And from information that's coming from the gambling organization, who's, who are obviously running an underground gambling ring. So they're not the most trustworthy people in the world. Um, there's going to be a federal investigation. There's going to be an MLB investigation. I don't put a lot of faith in what the MLB is going to say, but the feds are going to 
figure out what happened here. Yeah, of all the points that Tom mentioned, I'm right there with you. I think the most likely was your third point is that he found out about the debts and did his best to try and help his friend get out of the situation by giving him the money. Uh, and then in talking with the lawyers and talking with the teams as this news was about to break, all of a sudden they said, yo, Shohei, you got to do something here, man, because otherwise you're in big trouble. So I do think your third point is the most likely point. And honestly, the, the one I think is least likely is that it was is straight up stolen. Because, I mean, I saw in the chart in the chat, too, with Danny Clark. I mean, everyone's got bank account apps on their phone now. Uh, I know if there if it is like a ten dollar discrepancy, mm -hmm. I'm saying to myself, why is there ten dollars missing here? Well, what was this transaction? So but but we also realize we, we're not Shohei Otani. We don't Shohei Otani doesn't go on his Bank of America app and make sure his car payment came out. The the other thing that as I don't see a lot of people bringing up with all this yet is yes, Ipe might have had access to it and he could have sent this money if he had access to his account. But Otani also hires accountants that have like, to do his taxes and exactly. do his. All his all his this investments. Like Chances someone of had to have seen. Correct. Hey, what is this? Because that there's also the like tax exactly. implications here of this money, and and you have people. There's well, there's tax evasion. Yeah, yeah. there's 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 Definitely. parts of this that that like still don't make sense. I I want to believe Otani because I think he's great for the game, but I, I think man, this doesn't look to. good right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does not I think look we good. We all want to. I don't think anybody wants him to face. Oh, there's uh, definitely people who who would love to see him go down. Time. Well, but those are play those are people who just don't see what's who's best for the game. And obviously, yeah. besides everything that's happening right now, again, if he's caught, he needs to be suspended and you know serve whatever consequences yeah. are coming his way. But at the end of the day, if there is a window of which he he can get away with this, I'm hope I'm praying for that window. Yeah. That's yeah. that's how I'm looking at it. So, exactly, and I we'll see too because I I think. The the big thing with this, too, is it took a couple of days, but MLB finally announced that their investigation team is starting to look into it. And they had to. They didn't have a choice. Uh, but I will say I'll give the MLB a little bit of credit here. At least we're going with the innocent until proven guilty uh, concept, because I think a lot of times you see not just in sports, but across any industry, uh, people like to prosecute first and go to trial later. Uh, so I will say I'm happy at least there's no talks of suspension or shutting down for Shohei uh, while this investigation is getting underway because I'm a firm believer in innocent until proven guilty. It depends uh, though, well, man. If stuff starts yeah. coming out that like baseball it, it, there because there was there was baseball bets happening, you have to put him on the I think the commissioner's list. You can't let him keep playing if there's actual. You know, like the innocent until proven guilty is all well and good, but that's that's a court of law. This we're not that's not what we're dealing with here. Major League Baseball, so, if they if they think he was betting on baseball, they they have to. Oh they, no! If, if they think put him he on the was, list, I agree. But until they find out, I, I totally don't so think he's on any restricted it, list until it's proven he was guilty. Do I? Think I don't, he's that, guilty? It's, I think it, he's I don't guilty think it's by proven. association. It, it can't be until he's proven. If they if they suspect it, I think you have to. So put here's him on that here's list. the that's thing. The Here's the thing, and 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 you gotta remember, I, I I posted this on on X a few days ago. This is the direct language out of Rule Twenty One, the misconduct guidelines, Section D, which involves gambling, and uh, Paragraph Three, right? And quotes: Any player, umpire, or club or league official or employee who places bets with illegal bookmarkers or agents for illegal bookmarkers shall be subject to such penalty as the commissioner deems appropriate in light of facts and circumstances of the conduct. Any player, umpire, etc., who operates or works for an illegal bookmaking business shall be subject to minimum one-year suspension by the commissioner. For purposes of this provision, an illegal bookmarker is an individual who accepts, places, or handles wagers on sporting events from members of the public as part of the game and operation that is unlawful in the jurisdiction in which these bets are accepted. In this particular case, he does not even have to have bet on a baseball game. This guy, it, 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 any sport, the fact that these bets are placed with illegal bookmarkers because gambling is still illegal in California, and that's where the majority of these were placed, he... If Otani in any way, shape, or form knew that the money was going to him to pay off gambling debt, he is in violation of this rule and will be suspended a minimum of one year. 
if it is found out. Now, if it's if it turns out that Otani is telling the truth and this was stolen from him, the federal government is going to ask questions saying, well, how did you allow that to happen? Because now you have four and a half million dollars that you had, quote unquote, stolen from you that went to organized illegal crime. And the government is not going to accept, oh, my bad, you know, uh, uh, we, we lost track of it. You are responsible for your monetary wealth and funds, even if somebody is, is stealing from you. You are associating with that person. So he's got several questions to answer for, both at a federal level and both to Major League Baseball. So this is a big, big problem. And that rule right there. It doesn't even mention bets on the game of baseball. It is illegal bookmarkers, your automatic suspension if you had prior knowledge that that was the case. And this is why I think it's really being framed now in terms of theft. And again, do I think it was true theft? No, I don't. I think I agree with Tom's third point is that Otani was trying to help out his friend uh, by helping to pay off the debt. If that's the case, it still qualifies for that rule where he is subject to that minimum of one year suspension. Uh, but until they get more information about this, I personally don't think they should be able to do anything. Can they? Sure, they can. The league could do whatever they want, to be honest. We've seen it all the time. Uh, but I don't think anything should be done until proven. I'm a firm believer in that. Yeah, well, this is uh, still developing, obviously. And, and we saw the quote today. And uh, how many times did Joe say bookmarker right. instead of bookmaker? We don't My know. Bad. We don't know. But again, that quote from Shohei today in his pressure, I've never bet on baseball or any other sports or never have asked someone to do it on oh, my bed. Around the horn quick. Uh, we'll, we'll start with Rich and work our way down. Will Shohei Otani be suspended at any point for this? Yes or no? I don't I don't think he will. Tom? I think he's going to get away with it. I don't think he will. <sighs> I think he will because the, there's a federal investigation. And if, if that federal investigation proves that he sent money, the commissioner, the, their baseball is tied. Their hands are tied. They have to suspend him. Corey? I say not this year. It depends on the federal investigation. The fact that it got to this level, it's going to take a lot of time. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think he's going to get suspended at some point. I, I just don't. You, you're going from accusing a guy of of – making illegal bets to accusing him of wire fraud and embezzlement that the you it, it's such a leap you have to be able to prove that you knew nothing of it and a guy of otani's stature has a team working for him you don't make that much money without a team organizing your finances so somebody or he's defrauded by multiple people. Multiple people have to be yeah. involved for him to not notice nine it's wires. It's a massive case. It, it yeah. is a large-scale federal case that's going to take time. Yeah. It's going to be messy. Uh, I, there's definitely going to be penalties somewhere with this, and whether or not it's a suspension remains to be seen. The, the federal government, you know, the MLB has a big vested interest in him being innocent. The federal government yeah. doesn't. I mean, Otani isn't even a U.S. citizen. Like they, 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 the federal government really probably doesn't care less what happens. They, they just kind of want to figure this out. And Otani's also someone with this contract was already kind of skating some possible tax issues with how he's getting paid. Like there's, MLB's gonna have their hands tied. It, if they, that, that's that's what's I think it's gonna come down to. Quick Guys, shout give out you. To Sorry, oh, yeah. Joe. I was going to just I was going to the same spot the with you. <laughs> oh, wow. There you go. Uh, a lot of great interaction that we got in here, but I just wanted to shout out some of the new members that came in. We got Ghost in the chat again. Uh, the, now we have the, com the completed trio of Yankees Vibes. Give them a follow at Yankees Vibes and uh, check their show out at 7 o'clock on X. The Strike Zone. That is NFE. What's up, everybody? What's up, NFE? Make sure to give him a, su a sub on his channel as well. The Strike Zone does such a great job. Donnie Clark, salute Rich and the fellas. Always appreciate it. Donnie. Oh, we have a Puglisi in the chat. And it's not Joe. It <laughs> really? is Joe's wife. Joe's wife is impressed with his pronunciation too until he butchered bookmaker to bookmarker. So there you go. And then uh, JR Yankee, lock him up. I have a feeling uh, I know this JR Yankee fella. Uh, but anyway. We'll uh, we'll move forward, and I, and I know uh, that's such a big story. So it's almost a it's such a drop 
in, in story here. But we do have to cover the J.D. Martinez signing that did take, take place over the last couple of days. And J.D. Martinez uh, penned to a one-year $12 million deal with the New York Mets. Uh, interesting contract, $4.5 million mm-hmm. for, uh, that t- for this 2024 season. And then he did it $1.5 million every year, deferred from 2034 to 2038. Uh, obviously, this is pending a physical. This is prior to him actually inking the contract. But J.D. Martinez, now a part of the New York Mets. Corey Faz, what are your thoughts? Oh, I love the deal. And back when we did our offseason agenda way back in November, having J.D. being brought in on a short-term deal as a D.H. was right on my agenda. Uh, the Mets have desperately lacked a true DH since it was introduced into the National League. They thought that there would be some platoon of Dom Smith and Pete Alonso. J.D. Davis was in the mix. And there was talks of bringing back J.D. Davis, which I didn't want. Last year with Vogelback, I mean, it's just been a mess. J.D. Martinez is a proven DH. I mean, this is a guy hits for a decent average, 271, with pop, 33 home runs, 103 RBIs. And because he's playing DH, he's not running around in the field, a little less prone to injury. So you'll love to see that in the Mets lineup. And the real reason why the Mets jumped on this deal is because of the deferrals and moving that money out because it's less implications on the luxury tax. Hence why the Dodgers... And that's going to be an interesting scenario with the Dodgers with this whole deferred contract. Different conversation. But that's why the Mets jumped on this deal because it was a right deal at the right time with little uh, luxury tax implications. So I love the deal. JD's going to start in the minors for probably about two weeks until he gets called up, gets some at-bats. I love it. Let's roll. Yeah, I I, I like it for the Mets too. Uh, Listen, you know, the one thing the Mets were – missing in this lineup that you were kind of hoping Alvarez or Beatty could take that next step and provide was a little pop and protection for Pete Alonso. Now you have that. Now you're going to have JD able to slot in right behind Pete Alonso. Alonso is going to get more pitches to hit. You have a bridge to the bottom half of the order, which is going to include in some way, shape or form McNeil, Marte and Alvarez. And the big thing about the Mets is you go from, Two players who are guaranteed 30 home runs in Lindor and Alonso now, and and maybe an Alvarez now to three players who are guaranteed 30 home runs and potential of Alvarez reaching that mark as well. So the power and and the potency and the depth of the Mets lineup is, is just increased a major amount by bringing JD in. Listen, He's not going to play 150-something games. He's going to need his days off. He's going to need to take a day or two a week off, even as a DH. But the Mets can manage that, and making sure that you have that next bat behind P. Alonzo is key. I think the Mets' offense is now one of the top, you know, five, six, seven offenses in the National League, and that should be enough to help them win a decent amount of games this year. Yeah, a decent line for J.D. last year, uh, 33 homers, 103 RBIs, and uh, definitely going to be an opposing force in the middle of that lineup. But I'm going to quickly transition uh, somewhat to the Yankee side of the house. It's not really even though necessarily a Yankee connection, but, you know, Jordan Montgomery still hanging out there in free agency, you know, just chilling, you know, just opening day. Just, just hanging around. Away, and, you know, big, big time free agent, World Series champion, and he's just he's just hanging out there. Thomas. How are you feeling about Jay- Jordan Montgomery possibly coming back to the Yankees? I mean, I would I would be very happy for it. Uh, I think he's a, he's a quality arm. He's a proven arm in in New York, uh, and also is a guy who is gonna you know make his starts. I don't necessarily think it's going to happen. I think there's there's other teams that might be willing to to go to to some financial uh, you know places that the Yankees aren't, especially with the Yankees have the pending. Soto contract and and they need to make sure that they can uh you know quote unquote afford him um you know the Yankees could afford to spend you know double their payroll if they really wanted to um but I think this idea that you know he doesn't want to be in New York uh as a Yankee is is silly I think it's a very silly lazy argument that one of our co-hosts tried to make on uh, on Twitter over the it's weekend not lazy you know, one I'm not too- gonna get a word in it's not lazy when both Bowden and Heyman both reported the same thing. And it's yeah, not out of the stretch but, but Joe, of, of that, then what's possibility this right here? that a what guy this might. What's the guy the might, page? John uh-huh. Heyman of the New York Post reported the latest of the Yankees in Montgomery, who spent the first five plus seasons of his career in the Bronx. 
Anyway, this is from Heyman. Direct quote. Anyway, if Montgomery and the Yankees aren't each other's first choices, they may have little choice now. Sources say they are back in contact. A gap exists, but at least they're talking. But apparently he's got at least two long-term offers on the table right now. That was reported yesterday. So the I, I don't think that if push comes to shove, unless the Yankees outbid somebody by a significant amount, which we know they're not going to do, that, that he's not going to choose the Yankees. I don't think he wants to come there. First of all, I don't think he's going to either the Mets or the Yankees. I think Arizona, Baltimore, Boston all need pitching worse. I think they're all ready. I don't know how the, more the Mets there. make so much sense to me. I know that's out there. I, I agree. I, I, I would love to see the Mets sign him. I yeah. thought that for a while now, especially with the injuries. Like he would, he he's pitched in New York. He's he's dependable. I understand the Mets have had a good spring training. I think he makes all the sense in the world to go there. They can afford, they can afford it. It's not going to cost like, you know, it's not going to be the, the biggest contract in the world. I don't know. It's, I think what makes sense with the Mets now too, is if they could do one of these JD Martinez type deals with the deferrals. Cause that's the biggest thing from the Mets standpoint right now. They're so high with that luxury tax this year. If they could work out something with the numbers to defer some of this money and the, the hit this year from a financial standpoint, isn't too bad. And maybe try to do it like a three or four year deal, throw in some opt outs there. Uh, but the Mets need quality pitching, not just this year, but for beyond mm. this year. Because we mentioned it many times in the offseason shows that right now they have Kodai Senga under contract for next year. They have Sean Manaya under a one year deal uh, next year. He has a two year deal, so he has one year left. And then some of the younger guys, like a Tyler McGill or a Peterson who honestly might not even be Mets next year for all you know if they do bad. So Montgomery, I agree, makes all the sense in the world. The only reason why I think they're really in play now is because it's taken so long, and I think all of a sudden you're going to see those deferral-type deals become a real possibility to try and give them some long-term money that Montgomery wants while at the same time helping the Mets save a few bucks. Does he go to the Mets? I'm not sure. Probably not, but it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so Monty's still a free agent, and uh, again, I, I again to, to think that he's going to get something turned over the next forty eight hours is going to be crazy. But again, um, for this guy, I think there's value there. You know, you're not selling a pitcher who is going to be a one, maybe highest ceiling two. This is a three starter. Oh, sorry about that. That's going to be a, that's a three starter right there. You know, and, and he's been a career three starter. And for the Yankees' sake, that's what you need right now. You need a player that's going to go every fifth day, and Jordan's that type of player. And not knowing what the outlook is going to be on Garrett Cole. And again, right now, it's positive until, hey, who knows when he starts throwing, and it's a different story. I think it's an extra security blanket that the Yankees could use. Now, again, this is all pending on two things. And as Joe, and, and to Joe's point, does Monty seriously want to come back? And do the Yankees have serious interest? This John Heyman quote says, there might be something, but I don't know how big this gap is. The gap definitely exists. We'll see what happens with Jordan Montgomery come these next few days, but it's still shocking to me. It's March 25th and this guy is still unsigned, but we will move on from Jordan Montgomery and we will move on to Instagram. Now, as I typically do, uh, Corey Favs is a legend. You know why Corey <laughs> Favs is a legend? Because taking advantage of the Shohei Otani controversy built out this incredible meme <laughs> turned into a reel involving Vegas vacation and Chevy Chase and eBay. And this thing, what did you post this Thursday morning? I believe Corey, it was Thursday morning. It was the day after the news broke Corey fast. How many views does this reel have? As of about 45 minutes ago, 2.8 million views. 2.9. I just 2.9 now. Oh, 2.9. 100K, 100K since we started the show. 2.9 million views at the hands of Corey Favs, a real genius behind the reels. Corey Favs, you're the man. Thank you so much. And thank you all that uh, engaged with us on that reel. It was a lot of fun. So make sure to go check out Instagram. But Corey Favs has got the rest of the Instagram spot. So go for it, Corey. Well, if you want to go see that reel and every other reel that we typically post every weekday, go ahead and follow us at Empire State of Baseball. You'll see all our reels and also all our graphics, upcoming agendas for the show. So it's a great follow. You can also follow all of us individually, myself at Corey Favs, Joe at JR Pugs, Rich at Rich J Rivera, and Tom at T Waspel. Uh, again, go on Instagram. You can find all our reels, archive segments, preview polls, agendas, you name it, and more. Go ahead and give us a follow on the gram.
Thank you, sir. And of course, I just want to highlight a couple of more chats. Some new people came in. I forgot to mention my guy, Core Ryan's in the building. How many times will Joe say bookmarker instead of bookmaker? LOL. We throw that up again. But shout out to Core Ryan, uh, the genius behind Core Curriculum, which we're hoping returns back for the 2024 season. More to come on that. And my guy, Michael Caputo, making his debut here in the chat. Uh, Caputo affiliated with a lot of the spaces that we got going on and uh, Yankees Morning Brew. So happy to have Michael Caputo here in the building. Hope all is well, sir. Now, uh, we are going to move forward with our big segment of the night. You would have thought Shohei was the, after the, the yeah. conversation we had. We got into him, Shohei. But we do have a top 20 countdown in our outfielders. Oh, by the way, 90 people in the building. What's up, everybody? Thanks for coming out. Uh, but top 20 countdown for outfielders. And again, if you've been following us on YouTube, we've released at this point, Joe, if I'm not mistaken, what, six countdowns? Uh, I believe it's six countdowns. We just released one today, uh, which I believe was a uh, second baseman, if I'm okay. not mistaken. Uh, so we, we are almost home. Uh, we got one debut tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Yep. We'll, we will do the outfielders today, and then we have two more uh, later this week to round out our uh, top series of now 2023. Yeah. If we're doing the rankings, though, we got to do it right, right? So let's yes. get that music going. It is now time <laughs> for the top 20 outfielders of Major League Baseball. Let's get that music going. Let's hype up the crowd and take a drink. This is the ESB 2024 Player Rankings. Our top 20 outfielders. For Major League Baseball and for tonight's edition, live edition, right in the middle of an episode of Empire State of Baseball, we present to you the top 20 outfielders in the game heading into the 2024 season. And we're going to kick this off and kicking our list off is going to be Joe. Joe, let's talk about the first four outfielders we have on the list. Yeah, so we'll start at 20. Number 20 is Seiya Suzuki, the Japanese import for the Cubs, um, he had a good year last year, and he is looking to go to that next level. Uh, number 19 is Cedric Mullins. Uh, it seems that the only reason Cedric Mullins is this low on the list is due to injuries and the chronic injuries that he's had the last few years, but we know he's got a world of talent in being the center field in that list. Number 18 is the young stud the number i believe six prospect in all of baseball for the texas rangers in evan carter who was instrumental in their playoff run to the world series last year and another uh name another young gun here is nolan jones of the colorado rockies another top former prospect had a fantastic year in Colorado last year is going to make some noise. If anybody actually pays attention to the Colorado Rockies, you might actually enjoy watching Nolan Jones uh, might be the oh, only wow. player on the team yeah. that you might enjoy watching, but Corey, look, get, give me, give me who you're keeping an eye on. Oh, oh I have these tell first you. few. I really got my eyes here on that young Texas Rangers core. Uh, I know I mentioned Wyatt Langford as one of my potential rookie of the year candidates, but another one who could easily be that guy in the American League is Evan Carter. Uh, and listen, for a 21-year-old rookie to make a top 20 list, I mean, that just goes to show you got a lot of town. And in his very, very brief time in the show, uh, 62 at bats, five home runs, 306 average. And he continued that into spring training this year. Had a pretty nice spring, uh, two home runs, OPS 777. So lucky sevens across the board for Evan Carter. I'll tell you what, that Texas Rangers team, they're a World Series championship team last year. And it feels like they got so much better because this young core is coming up between Carter and Wyatt Langford. I mean, that's going to be a really fun team to follow this year. All right, let's move it on then to the next four here that we have on our list. And I hope Evan Carter goes off. Fantasy uh, fantasy baseball owner right here of Evan Carter. Here we go. 
Moving on to the number 16 spot, we have George Springer, the veteran outfielder, spent many years tormenting the Yankees on the Astros side. So now he's doing it closer to home in the American League East with the Toronto Blue Jays. George Springer at our 16 spot. And the number 15 spot is Brian Reynolds. Kind of flipped around different outfield positions over the last couple of years. I think he's going to be more of a mainstay this year in left field. Brian Reynolds, a switch hitter, it hits the list at number 15. At number 14, we have the young Michael Harris II. You know this guy was good because like it only took about a month for the Braves to lock him up when he made his Major League debut about a couple of seasons ago. So the speedy Harris checks in at number 14. And number 13, one of the Scott Boris five, Cody Bellinger uh, in the list at the number 13 spot. So a pretty solid list right here. Three of the National League side and one George Springer. Tom, uh, thoughts on these guys? Um, I'm a big fan of Bellinger. Um, I think he, you know, with his, his resurgence last year, um, I think he's, he's, he's a fun player. Uh, he also is going to be spend some time at first base, but you know, a ton of power, um, kind of just like an interesting, interesting character in the game of baseball. Um, so kind of, it's cool to see him on there. And then, of course, Brian Reynolds, everyone's favorite former, uh, potential Yankee, uh, for about two years when he was part of every, every mock trade that we were not willing to give up Jason Dominguez in. And uh, so he'll just continue to rot in uh, in PNC Park, which, again, is the most over it ballpark in all Major League Baseball. <laughs> there you go. All right. Oh. Well, we're going to set it down to the next point on your list. We're at the it was top. voted number one, by the way. I think Bleacher Report just did the list. Yeah, because they see, yeah, they see the, the, the skyline of one of America's worst cities, Pittsburgh, and they're like, this is amazing. I don't know about oh, that. Oh, well, Swift, Swift just crushed us. I love Swift. My girl lives in Colorado for the last year because her grandma was sick. Oh, shout out to grandma and the family there. So, I, so I've been to uh, a bunch of Rockies games last year. But Jones isn't better than Carter or Mullins, guys. Now, I mean, it's it's pretty close. Like, Jones has got, like, 30 home run potential. And uh, I think 20 home runs in 106 games last year. I hit 297 with a 389 OPS. Not that... Guys, we're we're splitting hairs here, but but Jones is more proven than the the Evan Carter right now, just because he's played more more games. He's, he's done more. Well, we move on to the next portion of our list, where Corey Faz Swift. picks it up at the number twelve position. Yeah, and in our number twelve spot, I mean, we're going right back to Texas. Uh, Adolis Garcia, man. I mean, this Texas team is such a fun team, and if you want some pop in the outfield. How about Adolis Garcia? 39 home runs last year, 107 RBIs. Also won a gold glove. So uh, shout out to you, Adolis. Also, thank you again for helping support my fantasy team uh, with those power numbers. So love to see you in the number 12 spot. Uh, at number 11, we have Randy Arozarena. Uh, and forget his regular season stats. What I'm calling out with Randy is the postseason. I mean, have you guys seen his postseason stats in 128 at-bats, 33 games, 11 home runs, 17 RBIs, an average of 335. OPS is over 1.1. I mean, you could not ask for better in the postseason. So Randy Arozarena, uh, well-deserving of that 11 spot. And we're now going to shift into the top 10 where a, uh, a local Met makes the list again. I think he was number 10 last year. There was a lot of debate whether or not he belonged, and I think he showed that he did, and that's Brandon Nimmo. Uh, Brandon Nimmo is shifting actually from center field to left, which I think hurts his value slightly. Uh, but overall, though, you can't diminish his importance to that Mets lineup because he is the definition of uh, an eye at the plate and getting on base, and he consistently has an on-base percentage that's pretty high. I mean, 363 last year, OPS of 829. 829 OPS is not bad for someone who typically doesn't hit a lot of home runs, although he did have a little pop last year. 24 home runs, that was the most uh, in his career. So, Brendan Nimmo, shout out to you. And number nine is Michael Trout. And let me say what Mike Trout, it's a little shocking to see him in the number nine spot, but I know why, and it's the fact that he can't really stay on the field much anymore. If he could actually stay healthy, I mean, he's right there in the top three conversation. Uh, but the problem with Mike Trout, I mean, the last time we really saw him go off, he did have a good 2022. But in the covid short season, uh, in 2021 and 2023, I mean, he didn't play many games. 
And the last time he really had one of those Mike Trout crazy OPS over 1.0 years was back in 2019. And then granted, he only played 134 games that year. He hasn't played 150 games since 2016. So Mike Trout, his biggest thing is can he stay on the field? Uh, and that's why we have him this low on the list because we don't think he's going to stay on the field. Yeah, I think uh, Corey stole a little bit of my thunder there with Mike Trout um, and, and the inability to stay healthy. So I won't focus on him so much. Um, you know, we, I, we we love Brandon Nemo as a Met fan. He's he's a steady, uh, consistent guy in the outfield. Played 150 games each of the last two years. So we know what you're kind of getting at Brandon Nemo at this point. I want to touch on Adolis Garcia here. Uh, debut on this list, obviously. Uh, 39 home runs, 170, uh, 107 RBIs uh, last year, 245 average, 328 on base percentage. But the big thing, and I think what kind of makes Adolis Garcia the guy to look for, was his postseason heroics last year. Before he got hurt and missed most of the World Series, at least from a fielding standpoint, he only had 10 at-bats in the World Series, uh, 323 eight home runs and 22 RBIs in the postseason last year. One of the biggest reasons the Rangers made it to the World Series and eventually won the World Series. Uh, he was absolutely fantastic. So I think a lot of people are anticipating that next step from Garcia to go from a 245 hitter to a 275 hitter and hit 40 home runs. That puts you in elite company. So we're looking for Adolis Garcia to take that next step and hopefully be in the top five, six, seven next year. Now, Tom, before I throw it over to you, I just had some comments in the chat because you just put out who are your top five outfielders. And in your next bracket here, we do have the fifth spot. So I do want to highlight a couple of them before we get there. Now, Sierra, hang on. Maybe you don't know. Harrison Bader could be in that list. Still not uh, on yet. Well, we'll find out. Uh, Donnie Clark, Judge one, Soto two. Now, okay, I do want to address this one. Judge Soto Jordan. Now, I will say Jordan's not on this list because we followed him as a DH. Because as of right now, according to Fangraphs, among other uh, roster projections, Jordan is listed as a DH. So he is actually number two on our designated hitter list that we did air a couple of mm -hmm. days ago. So Jordan will not be featured on uh, tonight's list. Uh, Swift here has got Acuna, Judge Soto, Julio Tucker. I do. Like That's that. a good list. A good list right there. It's a good, it's uh, good Acuna list. and Tucker from Donnie. Uh, we have from Sierra Judge Soto, Luis Robert Jr. Harrison Bader, and Adolis Garcia. Undying support for Harrison Bader of the New York Metropolitans. Soto, Judge Acuna, Alvarez, Tucker. Again, Alvarez not on the list, but again, it's a solid five if Alvarez is up here. But thank you for that, Hitman. And then Chris, Judge Soto, Spencer Jones for Dugo. Acuna. Come on, guys. We could do better than that. All righty. And then uh, Donnie's got yelled. All right. Wait, hang on. We're, we're getting out of hand over here. Tom, our next four, what do we got? Our next four, we're starting off with number, yep, number eight. Uh, with the usually injured, although last year not, Luis Robert Jr. of the Chicago White Sox, uh, a guy who, again, 2021-2022, uh, didn't play near nowhere near a full season. Last year played 145 games, got himself some MVP voting uh, to MVP votes. Uh, if he is healthy for uh, this year, you could see him really climb this list going into next year. Uh, next, we have Kyle Tucker of the Houston Astros, who – we all dislike. We don't dislike Kyle Tucker specifically, just the Astros. Um, and he's someone on the other side of the coin there. He has been very healthy the past few years. Again, MVP kind of candidate, uh, gold glove winner. Uh, he led the league in RBIs last year with 112, which kind of seems like a really low number to lead the league in RBIs. But, um, you know, that's just – that's that's how, that's how the, the year went. Last year, not the biggest power guy in the world, uh, but very consistent. 29 home runs last year, and then 30 each of 2022 and 2021, so you know what you're going to get from him. Uh, next on the list, we have uh, really quite the, the the polarizing character, Fernando Tatis Jr., former shortstop, has moved to right fielder, uh, won the right, he won the Platinum Glove Platinum. last year, which nope. I don't know about that, seemed... Uh, interesting that that he did he he got that um but hey he's uh he is a a great hitter who has been proven to be a, a good athlete to be able to play the outfield and, and apparently he's the best defender in all the nl um question mark all of baseball uh, no they do al and nl for platinum glove i think do they i, think I thought so. I, I believe 
Yeah. Plat- I thought there's only one. I thought it was an AL and an no, because NL. if it was that, that because the Gold Glove is the two leagues. The Platinum Glove is across baseball. No, I think yeah. th- I think there's a plat. I think there's a platinum for the AL and a platinum for the NL. The Gold Glove obviously is a Gold Glove catcher at each. I don't know. I could be wrong on that. It's, um, it's two. It, it's two. It is two, it right? Is. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Corey Favs. Okay. <laughs> Um, the point of having a platinum and a gold glove if you're just going to give out two awards each. But all right, go for it, Tom. Um, what do you got? Um, so there, there's Fernando Tatis Jr. Um, yep, that's him. And then um, finally on, on this portion here, we have Joe's favorite player, Corbin Carroll of the Arizona Diamondbacks of Los Serpientes, um, who really just, just took the league by storm last year, winning rookie of the year fifth in MVP voting. Uh, he's a guy who is going to get on base uh, a lot for you. Um, he stole 54 bags, led the league in triples last year. You know, decent amount of power to a 25 home runs. Uh, he's someone who it seems like uh, he is not in this. This there, there is a bit of a gap, I think, between uh, kind of these next four we're going to get to. And he's the one. Literally, but also I think figuratively knocking on that door to say, you know, I should be in the conversation with the judges and the Acunas and the other guys we're going to get to in just a moment here. A lot of great interaction in our chat right now. And yes, thanks for clarifying, Joe. Mookie is on our shortstop list. There was a couple of Mookies out there. But again, Mookie's been moved around how many times from the beginning of the offseason to now. So now he's a shortstop and he's on our list. But as it comes to this part of the list, I guess I will touch on Corbin Carroll. I'll do that out of out of respect to uh, my my colleague Joseph, who is a big Corbin Carroll fan. Actually, has Carroll predicted to win the NL MVP in 2024, and I can't blame him. He had a rock star uh, season last year, and uh, for Corbin Carroll, an All Star year in 2023, Rookie of the Year, of course, uh, fantastic numbers across the board. Definitely going to do some great things in Arizona. And I got to say, guys, I was in complete lockstep complete lockstep with how our final five ended up. So Carol in the number five spot, which leads us to our four, three, two, one. And uh, we're going to pull up those three, starting with Joe's guy. Joe, who do you have at number four? Yeah, we, we have that number four, Julio Rodriguez of the Seattle Mariners, uh, the young stud. Some people say the right-handed version of Griffey, in Seattle uh, for good reason to 32 home runs, 103 RBIs, 275 average stole 37 bases last year uh, patrol in center field. He is a five tool phenom for the Seattle Mariners. Um, and listen, a lot of people even expected more than that from him uh, uh, last year. So uh, we think his ceiling can be, higher than that we think his ceiling could be 45 home runs we think his ceiling could be 40 basically we think he could be a 40 40 guy so he is my pick for the al mvp this year for good reason uh he can beat you in many many ways so that that's our number four at number three i have juan soto juan soto is my american league mvp pick for 2024 uh, again, I think Soto's in, in the perfect position. I, like I said, the top five, I think are in the perfect position right now. Uh, Soto in the number three spot last year, another fantastic year for Juan 35 homers, 275 batting average, 109 RBIs, good for an all star selection and a silver slugger. And again, we're talking Yankees stadium, we're talking contract season. And for this lefty, it's going to be a monster year come 2024. He sits at number three on our list, Thomas. Uh, number two, I have my number one. I'm the only one on this panel who apparently has belief and faith in Aaron Judge. Rich is a total fraud by not having Aaron Judge, the captain of the New York Yankees, in his number one spot. I can't expect Joe to do anything that makes sense. Corey, you know, still love you, but Aaron Judge, we have at number two. Uh, and I guess really the only question that people could have with him going into this year is he's had this little bit of this this oblique rib thing that apparently is going to be fine. He's, he's back in spring training. Um, but, yeah, just, just to remind everyone, he missed some time last year at a freak injury at Dodger Stadium. Um, the year before, he had 62 home runs. And uh, I think he is the best outfielder in baseball. I think he, although is a very fine defender, um, offensively he is just an absolute – difference maker there's not another guy really like him that does everything that he can do 
Um, he's my number one, but he's number two on this list. Now, Corey Faz, before I throw it to you with the biggest responsibility of all with our number one, we are getting – the pitchforks are out in the chat right now because oh, they, yeah. they just saw that Soto – and Judge, neither of these two players are going to be our number one outfielder. Sierra's after our heads here. Um, <laughs> Sierra, yeah, listen, listen, our, don't come, don't come for me. Me. don't come for me. Don't come for me. Come on, we didn't put. I mean, Corey's going to. I heard Joe. Him. I heard Joe put Judge fifth on his list. That's what I heard. No, I put I put Judge second on that. We uh, we didn't put a slack. Corey's going to say right now. We didn't put a slack on. We we just put a guy who led basically the entire league in every offensive category. Corey, tell him who number one is. Well, number one is now fair to a place for the other side of town, and that is Harrison Bader. No, just oh, kidding. Come on. Uh, he is actually a New York Met rival, and that is Ronald Acuna Jr. And I mean, wow. listen, as good as a hitter Judge is, as good of a player Soto was, I actually think Soto has a better year between him and Judge. Acuna is an absolute cheat code all right if you're in a rotisserie type league a stat category league in fantasy baseball there is no player more valuable to your team than ronald acuna jr and i'm going to read some stats mm -hmm. to you last year because the this is a cheat code list of stats 41 home runs 106 rbis 337 average ops of one all right, he led the league in runs with 149. He led the league in hits with 217. The guy is an absolute cheat code. He was your MVP award winner last year. Uh, it pains me to say it because he's a New York Met rival, and he's going to be a Met rival probably for a long time, Ronald Acuna Jr. So listen, I had Acuna second on my list. Uh, and two quick things I, I just want to mention about him. One, I don't want to hear about the stolen bases. Stolen bases were up like 10,000% last year. Uh, here's um, Tom winning the fans it's over. 73! No. Stolen bases were up so much last year. He's a guy who previous <laughs> previous to last year was a good, he's a good stolen base guy. He was he had oh. stole 29, he sold 37 in a year. That's I mean, realistically, the kind of guy for the way they changed the rules for, for stolen bases last year. Everyone was stealing bases. So I, I don't want to hear it. Also, um, there was a lot of yeah, argument on Twitter a lot over the offseason. Judge had a better 2022 than Acuna had 2023. Judge's season in 22 is a better we're, season. We're splitting hairs. First of all, we're splitting hairs. It, that's debatable, but it, it depends on what you want. Think of it this way. Acuna turned 73 singles into doubles. If somebody hits 73 doubles in a season, you would say that they're one of the best hitters of all time. On top so of the 35 he had last year. I, I don't want to hear that. I, I'm looking for how much, how many more stolen bases he had than the next highest guy. And I, uh, Ruiz had 67 and then Carroll had 54. So uh, Ruiz in Oakland, nobody knows who Ruiz is. That's all he did was pinch run and steal bases. But this is not uh, a, a, a aberration. The guy led the league. The stolen bases are an aberration. Do you know how? Do you know the percentage increase in stolen bases last year from 2022? Forty-one percent. Forty-one percent more stolen bases. That's a correction. This was. This is normal, though. No, there are more. This is more normal than it's been in in twenty years. I'm just saying. This listen, he's he's he should be right for number two, but the, the the whole stolen base thing is is just kind of ridiculous at this point. Like it's, it's everyone was stolen. Like the stolen bases were up average. so much. Yeah, it's that's the one home run. I'm, I'm nitpicking the stolen, stolen base bases. part of it. I don't know. I I mean, you're combining it. 41 home runs, 106 RBIs, OPS over it's one. It's never been done. Oh, man. I mean, what, what a never phenomenal, allowed people to get like running year. starts at first base either. So, you know, it was first it's time for never everything. Been done, but it's never been done before. Not even Ricky Henderson did that. I, and, and again, we're splitting hairs here. Are you, saying, are you saying that Ronald Cooney Jr. is a better base dealer than Ricky Henderson? I'll tell you what, if you're building a team no, right now, right. So Ricky never hit 41 on that team. Well, yeah. It's just the stolen base. Ricky never hit 333 with 41 home runs. Again, I said this last week on the show in our predictions. He's not only my NL MVP prediction for 2024, he is the best player in baseball at this current moment. At this current moment, he is. I agree. I, I can't say the whole, it's not even close. 
he's a fantastic overall baseball player. He's he is. Player. Absolutely is. He should be at number one. Uh, Ronald Acuna uh, is our number one outfielder. Mm-hmm. For, for Major League Baseball, according to the, the four schmucks that you've just been listening to for the last hour. <laughs> so uh, we'll throw up again one more time the, uh, the, the list for, uh, for S's and giggles. But here it is, your top 20 outfielders, according to the folks here at Empire State of Baseball. But with that said, let's, uh, let's come back down to our show, our normal show, Empire State of Baseball. A lot of, st- a lot of great takes in the chat. I love it. Uh, a lot of love for Harrison Bader. Fantastic. Uh, Donnie Clark, Rich, this is my hot take and mark it down that Spencer Jones will be better than Acuna. Oh, yeah, come on, guys. Oh, come on, guys. Down. Now it's in the recording. For all come on. Time. Thank you, sir. Donnie. It won't be better than Aaron Judge. Bojo, you have some time for some more so won't be last Acuna. minute comments. He's got a better uh, chance of being Joey Gallo than Aaron Judge. Want to throw another shout out to my guy, SJ83. Michael Harris flirting with that 300 and slides into that Atlanta order nicely. Shout out to you. Yeah, Harris, SJ well deserving of that stuff. 83. Oh, and another shout out last minute. Chris Califf, though, CK over at Yankees Pod. Yo, yo, yo. What's going on, Chris Califf? Uh, you guys are fantastic. 97 people in the building. Maybe we'll crack 100 by the time I call it, call it a show. Uh, but let's, uh, let's end this thing. Actually, before we end this thing with some, some upcoming announcements, uh, let's talk about, uh, our platform over at X and Joe's got that spot. So go for it, Joe. Yeah. You can join us on X. Actually, the majority of people in the building right now are watching on X about 84 of you. And you can join us over on X at ESB Podcast. You follow our subsidiary accounts, which is really important because the season is starting on Thursday and we are going to be live tweeting games from our subsidiary accounts. Me and Corey are at ESB NYM for the Mets account. Tom and Rich are at ESB NYY. For the Yankee account, we want to make sure we don't cross our streams when we're tweeting out the games. So follow those. And then you can follow us personally, of course. Corey at G. Gorey, myself at JR Pugs, Rich at Rich J. Rivera, and Tom at T. Waspel, all on X. We have over 3,000 followers. We're looking at 3,100 coming up soon. And we continue to grow. Also, if you're watching on X, go to the YouTube channel. Yes. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. If you want the top 20 lists, the videos explaining our top t- uh, 10s and 20s, they're all exclusively on YouTube. You can go in, click there, watch those videos. They're short. They're under 20 minutes. They're fun uh, as well. So mm-hmm. now we'll get on to what we have in store for season three. Rich, you can take that away. Season three begins next week, April the 1st. That is a Monday. We're still going to be live here every Monday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. And and we're very excited to uh, get into our third season of ESB, which we believe is going to be our best season to date. You know, the last two seasons, we've had a lot of amazing moments, a lot of fantastic guests, a lot of great interaction, a lot of Tom and Joe going at it. A lot of bird watch. I don't know. Birdwatch bird bird watch is bird, bird watch might be unbeatable. Well, we did have bird watch, but now that the Orioles are a juggernaut in the American League. East, bird watch really have bird watch. You need to have a new team now to do like a similar bird watch. But anyway, Tigers uh, watch. Some would say Tiger we watch. sparked the Tiger Orioles' uh, new run here. And, and, and by we, we mean Tom. Tom. Tom sparked it. <laughs> well, all right. But anyway, so for those of you who weren't with us last year, last couple of years, well, first of all, thank you all for joining us on this ride. Uh, now that we're heading into season three. Now, what to ex- expect for season three? And, and just more over our regular episodes of Empire State of Baseball. Well, we still do our Empire Express bit where we go through the, the, the best of the Mets and Yankees and some MLB news as they're, you know, the most important ones. But we do have some recurring segments that we're going to bring to you. Uh, last year, we had a bit called ESB Games where we ended each night with a game. Uh, one game being Guess the Graph, Tom Waspel's baby, where we pull up an autograph ball and we have to guess whose autograph baseball that is uh, trick of the trade, which we're trying to guess the, the missing component of a former Yankee or Mets or, or famous MLB trade. We play a lot of good games here on the show and we want our fans and our, our chat members to be part of that. 
Because at the end of the day, the four of us are playing for bra- bragging rights. And uh, it, it's good to know who's the most knowledgeable of the baseball fans here on our stream right here between the four of us. Number and it's two, important to know that it's me because I'm the champion. Well, it was Tom last year. So Joe is right there behind is Tom. you. So we'll Tom is happens. the champion. We'll see what happens in 2024. Like but maybe, but maybe we, we need to add something to it. Because a couple of years ago, t- Joe had to wear a Yankee jersey because he lost a bet to Tom. I feel like we need to have something more than just bragging rights this year. So we're going to have to talk offline and figure out something fun. <laughs> the winner and something terrible for the loser but we'll figure it out uh next uh we're gonna be uh involved in spaces this year on on twitter or on twitter on x shame on me uh both the esb no, no nym shame. and esb nyy account will be launching some spaces throughout uh throughout the month uh so we'll let you know when those spaces go live uh and the names of the spaces all that great things uh and we also have some roundtable episodes that we're going to schedule for sporadically on the Empire State of Baseball channel. We will have a Mets-specific roundtable episode. We will have a Yankee-specific roundtable episode. Uh, again, there's not going to be a regular schedule on these. They're going to be scheduled sporadically throughout the season. So we will keep you posted on all our social media platforms when we go live. We're going to have some special guests join us throughout the season. We're already in talks with a few great ones for some upcoming episodes. So we'll keep you all posted with that. We've got a lot of great stuff happening for the 2024 season and we are looking forward to share it all with you but we do have some upcoming episodes uh that we need to throw down with you guys for episode 78 our season three three premiere uh we are gonna obviously launch uh our opening day segments and uh there's a chance that we're gonna have a special guest join us so we'll keep you posted there for that special guest next week monday april the 1st at 8 p.m eastern time then we have our head-to-head episode mets versus yankees uh we'll we'll debate Who's got the best shortstop between Volpe and Lindor? I mean, that's not really a debate there. But you know what I mean. We're going to go back and forth on debating the positions of both the Yankees and the Mets. And finally, we have our subscriber giveaway episode on episode number 80. We're going to give away a prize here on our show as a thank you, as a token of our gratitude to you, our fans that have subscribed to us, that have followed us. We're up to 1,000 followers now on Instagram. So a lot of thanks to be shared. And we're going to have a special episode for you guys on episode 80 in a few weeks time but that's going to be it for tonight's episode of empire state of baseball so let's throw it around the room for some final words Thomas, starting with you uh yeah i like to thank i don't know i don't really know what i got right now i'm kind of checking out my fantasy roster what i did i uh i drafted some some guys that could be in some rookie of the year situations it's all starting pitching i don't believe in relievers um so i want to just pre-thank uh, I want to pre-thank, let's say, Jorge Soler. I, I draft you, and I think you're going to have a huge year in the DH role and part of our top 10 DHs. I think you're going you're gonna to help me out. So thank you, Jorge, for the huge year that you're going to have. Thank you, Tom, for that. I thank baseball for being back on Thursday. I opening love it. day. It should be an American holiday. Everyone should be off for opening day. Yes, the sir. Fir- pitch of the season shouldn't be in Seoul, <laughs> South Korea. It should be 1230 in the afternoon in Cincinnati with the Reds and the Cardinals. That's when first pitch should be. Cincinnati. That's when baseball season starts. Those Cincinnati. Cincinnati. The first pitch should always be in Cincinnati at 1230 in the afternoon opening day. 100%. I want to thank FanDuel Sportsbook for not making me go through my interpreter to bet sports. <laughs> <laughs> and I think on that note, uh, we <laughs> we will call it a show. Oh, wait a minute. I just saw this last minute thing. I needed to throw this out there. Uh, how about Mets fan uh, gets a Yankees tattoo and vice versa for uh, for the loser of the ESP games this year? Could be, be a call. Be researching uh, baseball until it's coming out my ears to prevent that from happening. My girlfriend would love it if I had a Yankee tattoo. No, come on, Joe. We, we all know you just cheat. You just hit the Google machine during the He was the cheating show. last year. We'll cheat this He's year, though. He was not though. cheating last year. Lenny Harris, baby. Lenny Harris. Clown. Clown show. All right, everybody. See you next Monday. Take care.